My hope was that having John Dominic Crossan here would be a way of encouraging those folks who have trouble with traditional Christianity. What I've seen him doing is saying, if you're going to get your Christology right, if you're going to get your understanding and your vision of Christ right, you have to understand Jesus, because that's the one who's claimed to be the Christ. So he undercuts that and says, look, lots of people were called son of the high God, like the ruling Caesars. And they had a way of bringing order and peace to the world through violence. And he said, Jesus took those titles and turned them upside down to basically uphold a different way of working. What can it possibly mean? Forget whether you believe it or not. What can it possibly mean to take those titles from the Roman emperor on the Palatine Hill in Rome and apply them to a Jewish peasant on the Nazareth Ridge in Galilee? Is it all some kind of a Jewish joke? And is that the whole problem of Christian origins, that the Romans had no sense of humor? <laughs> now that's an honest to God, first century question. If you think of Paul talking about Jesus or the Christ as, a, as the savior of the world, a good honest pagan with an open mind would say, but Paul, we already have one. What do we need a second one for? What's your guy going to do for us differently? I didn't know anything about him. <laughs> I thought he would be some dry, uninteresting. I mean, he is profound. And it fits in with everything that I've been feeling and thinking about. You know, the actual word, the titles, the son of man, son of God. And he's making that so down to earth. The primary mission of the church is to take the world back from the thugs. I mean, I think we have to understand what we're up against. We're up against the normalcy of civilization. It would be much easier if we were up against a few bad guys. The normalcy of civilization, at least for the last 6,000 years, has been imperial. That the way to get peace is that we have top of the mountain. Well, maybe the next valley, farther on. How far out do we feel safe? We have to control the world. It's not safe unless you control the world. It is a failed program. It doesn't work. Because you always have the next round. You don't get peace, you get lull. And the next round is always being more violent than the preceding one. We have the power now to destroy, at least ourselves. That's really what we're up against. I don't know how they could see so far ahead in the first century, except they're coming out of that tradition of distributive justice. And they could see that this system can't work because it's not what God has built into the world. Divine justice is like social justice on steroids. <laughs> it is the way God has built the world, so it will not work any other way, because there is a thirst for justice, distributive justice, in the human heart. It's something that's built into our hearts, otherwise we would have settled down for empire centuries ago and be quite happy with it. What I liked best about what John Dominic Crossan said was this notion of uh, distributive justice. Uh, I'm really fascinated by that, and I think it has huge implications for the Religious Society of Friends. I think the challenges that are affecting um, Quakers, but not only Quakers, I think Christians in general, is this question of resources and how they're utilized and who gets to say how they're utilized. And so this notion of calling people who say they want to follow Jesus to wrestle with the question of, well, what does it mean to see justice in the context of distributing resources differently? And how might we imagine doing that in a world where that is such a no-no? It'll be interesting to see what kind of leaven, since this was held at Earlham School of Religion, what rises up in terms of conversation.